Hello everyone and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. This is episode 136 and I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and we have our resident cellular healing specialist, Dr. Dan Pompa on the line, of course, and we have special guest today, Dr. Chris Zeno. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Chris. So Dr. Chris was inspired in high school by his father to begin what would be a successful bodybuilding career. Dr. Zeno began natural uh, competitive bodybuilding as he was going through college for exercise and physiology and won many national titles, including Mr. America in 1999. Through all of these life experiences, he was being prepared for his ultimate work in life, helping people reach their God-given health potential. As an avid researcher and, and graduate of Parker College of Chiropractic, Dr. Zeno continues his education by staying abreast of the most up-to-date research on body functionality, eating plans, and exercise principles. Dr. Zeno's passion is to educate and support as many families as possible so they can reach their God-given health potential through natural chiropractic care. He has seen God take a dream and make it a reality as Abundant Life Chiropractic is now the largest chiropractic clinic in the world. Abundant Life and Dr. Zeno will continue to educate people on how the body functions and the importance of honoring God with the body through eating wisely and exercising. So welcome, Dr. Chris, to Cellular Healing TV. Thank you. And, and we just happen to be sitting next to each other here in beautiful yeah. Park City. I had to come all this way to get this man right here. Yeah, so uh, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for being on the show. <laughs> this is hideout. He it said. is, yeah. found me in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> I found him. <laughs> That's funny, it's my hideout too. That's yes. how I knew, right? That's how I knew. Well, we're, we're, we don't bring slackers. Yeah, we don't bring slackers on this show. Resume is no slacker resume, right? The number one chiropractic clinic in the world more lives than most people I mean that's safe to say so uh, you know there's definitely no slacker rule here and you know what's not updated on that resume and we're gonna get to this is it, it talked about in 1999 winning mr. America but he just won mr. natural universe just how long yeah, ago um, July 2nd yeah yes. July 2nd two, wow. yeah 2000 Yep, this year. So, yeah. So, I mean, that that needs to be added on, on the the man's resume too. And uh, I'm not showing, you know, the guns here, but uh, we had to take the wide angle lens. Look at look at this. Look at this. You see, it's like my head. It's like my head, right? So, you know, we had to get the special camera. I had to pull the wide angle here. So, we got it in, though. We got it. But yeah, panoramic. We'll, we'll do what we take. You should see the scene here. If I have time, I'll show it to you. But uh, it, it's some point here where, where we're sitting. So if there's a little delay, we just wanted to be outside. But, you know, Chris, I, I love to start every show by, you know, people's story. And, you know, your father, I just learned that, just uh, her reading that, encouraged you into natural bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the guy's natural. I think we said that, which makes it even more amazing. So that's where you started. But something else brought you into chiropractic. Practic. Tell that story because that really what makes, in my mind, which made you great. Yes. So, the Mr. America, 1998, 99. You know, I, I, I was continuing to compete and train, and then, um, you know, I just started uh, having, you know, just going to the bathroom like five, 10, 15 times a day. Number two. Yeah. Number, number one. Two. No, number, number two. two. Yeah. So you know, I thought hey, we can say poop on this. Yeah. So we say yeah, poop. Well, all the time. I'm really into poop, <laughs> just like you are. Um, yeah. So I noticed that I was in the bathroom, no big deal. I was, you know, I didn't even tell Whitney, you know, my wife, and it got worse and it got worse and it got worse to the point I'm passing blood. And uh, if you ever, you know, for most people, when they have a symptom, they go to Google and they do Google MD, and they find out. So I see blood in stool. I'm like, that's cancer. I'm like, Shit. So. And I remember I was 20, you know, 26 at the time, and I remember having the moment going, you know what? My dad died of cancer at 68. My grandfather died in 75 before I was even born. I said, you know, maybe cancer was in the cards for me, but is, is it gonna, is, did it happen now? Uh, you know, I thought maybe it'd be in the 50s, but like it was this little underlying fear of cancer. And so when I started seeing that, I'm like, well, maybe this is that. And that's it. Still didn't say anything. Maybe it'll go away. It didn't got to the point where the day my wife found out, I was at a TJ Maxx, it was on a Sunday, and uh, it got to the point where you couldn't hold your bowels anymore. You know, like if you weren't around a bathroom, 
I was I was not eating just to coordinate my day. If I had a good and, and how old were you at this time? Um, right there, twenty six. Yeah, twenty six. So it, it, it depends. We're in the in the the reality. Yeah. Well, point. yeah, but I mean, I was too stubborn and prideful to go that route. Yeah. So, no, I get it, man. Right. Believe me. Yeah. But that was that was the day. The first time it happened it was at a TJ Maxx and the bathrooms were closed for construction, and I I just you just can't hold your bowels anymore. So in the public, it was it was probably the most embarrassing first time. And that was the first time I met it because when that happens once, then you're always living in fear of it. So this, this physical disease just turned into an emotional disease of anxiety because you always, everywhere you went, is this going to happen again? Well, anyway, I called Brittany. She comes, we had a little escort. She puts, uh, you know, towels on the front seat. And then we went to the doctor. And they did a colonoscopy and they diagnosed me with ulcerative colitis. And so the doctor goes, listen, you have an incurable disease. It's called ulcerative colitis. In incurable disease. Yeah, that's what he so said. It's, it's right off the bat. It's incurable. It's autoimmune. You'll have it the rest of your life. And you're going to probably need surgery you know, within, within 10 years if the drugs don't help. So put me on high-dose prednisone. They put me on Xanax and Valium. And then I started getting addicted to that because I needed that to go to sleep from prednisone. Uh, and then they give me a drug called Asacol that damaged my liver enzymes so bad that they also diagnosed me with a medically induced hepatitis. So I had medically induced hepatitis, ulcerative wow. colitis, so then I was being, being treated for that. So all this stuff's going on. I continue to get worse and worse. And then I had a little bit of hope because I went to Dallas, Texas, Baylor. And they had a huge medical team. They, they were top for digestive disease. So, you know, I, you know, even my patients, I was here. Well, we went to the best. Yeah, yeah, you we were there. The yeah, yeah, so exactly. I went to the best, yeah. the billion-dollar facility. And they put me on a Remicade for the autoimmune of course, yep. interferon for mm -hmm. the yep. medically induced hepatitis. They put me on a, an organ rejection medication mm -hmm. because they felt, well, if it's autoimmune, if it could sh permanently shut down your immune system, this won't happen. Yeah. But then your chances of cancer goes up to ninety percent. Sure, this is they, they even said this probably won't kill you, but cancer will. And um, I got where I was down. I went from two thirty to one hundred fifty eight pounds, and the only option now was surgery. So listen, we're going to remove you. This is tough. They said, listen, we're going to remove you, Colin. Wait, I have to put one yeah. humorous point in there. He dropped to my weight. <laughs> it yeah. took sickness. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah it was fast. Mm -hmm. um, so they said, listen, we'll set you up for surgery. And, you know, you just when you're in that system, you're like, all right, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're like, because it's, Fear. They go, it's not a part of your colon. It's your entire colon. So we're going to have to you, – we you're going to have a classroom bag. We have to take out the whole colon. We have a classroom bag, and it'll break, it'll leak, we'll probably have infections. The surgery has a high risk of infection uh, and multiple surgeries. And then you'll still be on $2,000 worth of medication per month. You will, uh, so I'd be on a medical debt for the rest of my life. And then the big thing was sterility. You know, they said with these medications, you'll probably be sterile if you're not already. Huh. And, uh, well, just, we're just letting you know everything. So at least they truly gave you an informed consent. Listen, this is, this is the deal. A and a half. So I went to see my mom. So I have a mom who lives in Sarasota, Florida, and she, uh, you know, she already buried two sons at this point. So this is son number three. She's going through this. She sends out the prayer emails. When she sent out the prayer emails, you know, everybody responds with the whole we we pray that the surgeon's hands are blessed. Yeah, and that. Right. But uh, one person, which was my tenth grade anatomy teacher, says, "Listen, I want to speak to your son." And he gets in there. So you know, I fly home, and then this there's my anatomy chair. It's even twelve years or more. Like, what are you doing here? He's like, well, listen, I want you to go see my doctor. He's a corrective care chiropractor. You know, we'll, we'll find the cause of the problem, and this will be great. Almost nonchalantly, mm -hmm. to the point where, because I was it was a blind spot in my life, and I was naive to that, it almost was insulting. I'm like, listen, I appreciate you. Being yeah, here. right. I yeah. go, but you know, I've been to the best, you mm -hmm. know, top of top in the country. I've done all the tests, invasive. You know, you name it. We spent the money or we have the bills. And I don't have a sore neck. Yeah. And then so you're telling me, because, you know, when I played high school uh, baseball, I knew about a chiropractor. He was, he was almost like an athletic trainer. He'd tape my ankles or stretch my hamstrings out. So I'm thinking, like, how the heck is this connected to an autoimmune disease? He had no clue. And, and then because he's a coach, so he knows how to motivate you and persuade you. He's like, listen, he goes, if it was possible for you to avoid the surgery or get off some of the drugs or, you know, or, or get – even ten percent better. Are you open to it? I'm like, yeah. I that go, was that was a good yeah. way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I go, but I tried everything, and then this was the best thing. He says, "Listen, you didn't try anything because if you tried any, if you tried everything, you'd have your result." So, Mike, good man. This guy's good. No, he's a coach. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, so I went to see this guy, Roger Romano. You know, that was oh, by the way, 
I have yeah. a story about how I know Roger Romano that brings this whole thing together, yeah. but go ahead. And so I went there and then Roger, that was the first time that someone told me exactly what chiropractic was. It wasn't what many people see when they drive by a store or they see him in the yellow book. He, he truly gave me the principle as it was originally started by B.J. Palmer. Absolutely. So, and he explained to me the nervous system and how the brain controls everything. And it was he spoke in absolutes. Like I couldn't call him on anything. Right. It right. was like law, 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 law. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Right. Because I was eating good. You know, I was exercising. So there was this, what was this missing piece? And it was the nervous system. So. I took pictures of my spine. I had a huge uh, misalignment, bad or subluxation, as we call it. Huge damage, 20 degree curvature in my lower spine. And those nerve roots come out and they, they innervate the, the digestive system. But for someone, you could have a, a 10 degree misalignment or subluxation and you have no pain. I didn't right. have any pain. Right, you didn't you have know? Yeah. Uh, Some people, they can't get out of bed. Right. So right. the symptoms are just fire alarms going off. So my first symptom was bleeding and, and going to the bathroom. So I had this disease process growing and going to my body because those organs are not healing and functioning as God created to. And uh, the diagnosis or the name that medicine put on that was ulcerative colitis. Right. But and you'll find out it's just dysfunction. The body not, it's just the body out of, out of health, out of true health and function. So he showed me the x-rays and then I'm like, listen, I'm like, so, and this is the reason why I chose chiropractic. I go, so, okay, I do all this. When am I going to get better? I want to know because all I've been told was when we do this drug, you'll get better. When you do this drug, you'll get better. And I've, been, I've just been strung all along. Once we take your colon out, you'll be better. And his words again. See, there's, there's this piece. The way people communicate, he says, listen. He's like, as long as you have this subluxation or interference between that brain and those organs, your body has no chance of healing. He goes, but when you, find, when, when you work and you remove that interference and allow that life to flow to those organs – then the body now is finally in the right environment to heal. He goes, but the day and the time it happens, that's between you and your body and God. So he's okay. like, and so he, so he didn't say it's going to happen. This he's like, but I'll tell you, you'll get there if you don't quit. I'm like, fair enough, because that was the most honest answer. I believe, yeah. And uh, so we started three months uh, a after the starting the corrective process and getting chiropractic. Um, I was off half the medications. You know, five months I was off all the medications, and then at seven months the blood stopped, and I was probably at 15 pounds. So. You know, I was a week and a half away from choosing. You know, no one forced me to do the surgery, but I, I chose. Yep, that's the route I'm going to do. So I was a week and a half away of doing something that would totally, I don't know where my life would have been. But all I know is basically from that point forward to, to today, everything I have and experience would not be here. You know, I chose okay. chiropractic as my profession, so that yeah. was my journey. You know, I could take care of my wife. I have two beautiful boys that I never would have had. Yeah. Um, we're not. We're not. You know, we 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 paid those stupid medical bills off. That were, that really didn't help. But I, I I went through a journey. To to that a lot of times people say that your biggest values come from your biggest voids. And when you lose your health, you know as well. When you lose your health, to myself. Yeah. When you lose that that void in your life turns into your biggest value, and the fact that you or I could do something right. in our life to then be able to bring that value to other people with conviction and leadership, um, then we just change people. It becomes our purpose. Yeah. 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 I mean, listen, I, it's like we both sit here. Yeah. Our life, the fact that we helped so many people and will continue to help so many people is because of our adversity. You know, we have so many people watching this. They need to hear the message because I, I tell them all the time. You know, people watching this show are typically seeking an answer for themselves, right? It's like, and I always say, look for your purpose in your pain. Your purpose came out of your pain. My purpose came out of my pain. And I said uh, I knew Roger Romano as well. There's an amazing side to that story because you know the story and, and you know, some of our viewers obviously know the story. You know, we adopted two kids that lost their mother and their father tragically. They lived on Anna Marie Island, which was Roger practice in Sarasota, yeah, sure. down the road, so yeah. to speak, right? Um, they had some health issues. Dylan, who is my son now, uh, had, you know, he was actually damaged after vaccinations, right? Ended up on the autism spectrum. And we encouraged them to go to Roger Romano. So we found, well, we found a chiropractor, right? And that was principled and yeah. Roger Romano was the one that they recommended. And so they went to Roger. We got to know Roger from going them, uh, from them going there. So Roger became a friend. Roger transformed their philosophy, right? I mean, as far as how they looked at health. But um, so that was, Roger became a major connection uh, with us. So after Lisa and Les, that's the parents of my children today that we adopted, that died, 
you know, Roger was one of the first that reached out because, you know, it was in the paper and, um, you know, the tragic death. So Roger means something very special to me too, as well as you. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that, that's, that's the main, just when you listen to my story, it was, it was, what's even more important is that it wasn't Roger who changed my life. Initially, it was a, a patient. So that absolutely. means that he was a doctor that properly educated his patients absolutely enough so they had enough confidence because I know you know when you see someone hurting and you, you, you don't want to buy so but he, he was educated enough and had an experience himself enough to be able to go and feel the confidence to talk to somebody mm -hmm. and say get out of his chair he didn't write an email and because and that was the only person in my life that told me this wow that, that's incredible 99% uh, of the emails that my mom, they, they all hope the drugs go well hope this good but no one told me about this but that was the one person that's the, so I'm just telling you, it's like that, that BJ Palmer quote, you know, never underestimate it as something you say, think, or do because yeah. it affect the lives of millions of people. And, you know, I always tell people hundreds, hundreds of thousands of years are added to hundreds of thousands of lives because of his patient yeah. and Roger, you know, studying that. That's crazy, you know, but, you know, Roger was functioning from purpose, yeah. right? And a philosophy, the philosophy that, we, that healed you and healed me, removed the interference, the body does the healing, right? It's not, it's, a it's not about taking the next thing. I mean, that's what gave me my life back. I mean, true cellular detox, you know, removing chemical interference gave me my life back. Removing physical interference gave your life back, and chemical you know, as well. You absolutely, know? and me too, and physical as well. Yeah, I mean, right. I, you it's know, just, I was getting adjusted. It's it's the combination. Yeah, it was right? a combination of yeah. everything. You mm -hmm. just can't, you know, because I could, you know, I know people. You, you just can't get adjusted and then put chemicals in the body. It just doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. No, it it doesn't work. work. Right, yeah. and vice versa. You know, you can't just put chemicals in the body. You know, or or just. Uh, Eat right and, and, and if you're uh, subluxated like yeah. that, I mean, well, you know, and we say that word so, you know, just it's, it's an equation. It's yeah. a simple, it's simple math. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, these bones yeah. go out of line. They put pressure on nerves. This yeah. runs everything. Right. How in the world? These organs are healing day in, day out. They have to. They're healing. They have to regenerate. If they're not regenerating, they're what? They're degenerating. When we interfere with that, either chemically or physically, for disease, you know, but you know, I mean, to finish my point there, Roger was functioning out of purpose. He, therefore, he said, you know, he educated that patient, you know, to the point where that patient understood the philosophy, right? And therefore, because he was functioning out of purpose, look at the lives that have changed. Yeah. Look at your clinic, you know, it's like, look at my kids, you know, it's like they, that just came to purpose, you know, out of purpose. When you're functioning from purpose, and we have a lot of doctors that are watching this show, it's like that's how you change lives. And the great thing about purpose is purpose, you know, passion drives you, but purpose pulls you. And the great thing about purpose is it, it pulls you during the times that there are adversity yeah. and there are tough times. That's yeah. the thing that keeps pulling you. But if you just try to do it on pure passion, you're going to burn out. Yeah. So the, and the, the purpose of it, and you know why, and the shame of it is that there's a lot of people that, you know, do health and nutrition and and chiropractic or anything alternative. I, I hate the word alternative. Yeah. I like to say it primary, but, and, and you know, they do have other different motives. And then people are so, you know, it's society today and people could be so you know, sinister or, or, or they don't believe. And, you know, it kind of, it, it's hurtful because we're just literally trying to help people as mm -hmm. much as we can. Yeah. And, you know, uh, due to their past experiences yeah. from whatever, it, it actually interferes with them you know, getting forward. the truth. Yeah, yeah I, I see it here all the time, you know, because people have done everything in law, you know, did the wrong thing. You know, it's like it, you have to, and I believe people sense when someone's functioning out of purpose versus prosperity, right? You know, f prosperity may occur. Uh, you know, there's many people who are very prosperous because, but I'm telling you, it comes from a great purpose to change the world, make a difference, you know, and when you have it the other way around, if you're trying to function from prosperity and then create, you know, the, the, the philosophy from there, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't, doesn't work. But, you know, we, we both sit here with great purpose. We both have changed a lot of lives, but it came out of our pain. Mantra, my, my wife's mantra is from pain to purpose. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's where actually that came from. Uh, you know, just looking at, and I, I do want to shift gears in a little bit, you know, to watch the show that just for performance based uh, reasons too, you know, and I want to get to exercise, you know, but, you know, I, I don't want to leave the chiropractic thing quite yet because, you know, do you believe that 
chiropractic plays a role in every condition. And I'm not going to say chiropractic will heal every condition. The body heals, but plays a role in allowing the body to heal in any condition. Because there's people watching this with multiple conditions wondering, is this, could this help me? Oh, I mean, absolutely. Because it's, it is what controls all function. Right. I mean, you know, that, that your brain controls every cell of your body, you know, trillions of cells. And a lot of times, I'm going to put it in a certain way, so maybe it could kind of open up your eyes. You know, when, you know, when I talk and I educate people, no matter what their religious background, I get everybody on the same page, such as this. You know, everybody could agree that you went from two cells to trillions of cells in nine months. That wasn't random. No. So there is, you call it what you want, innate intelligence, universal intelligence, God, you know, whatever, right? You know, there's intelligence. There's something there. It's not random. And so I go, so when you were born, you know, when a baby's born, they always call it the miracle of life. And I said, okay, so when you were born, where did that intelligence, where did that actual master mechanic that created every organ, every cell, every tissue, the ones that are diseased in your body right now. So that, that information, that wisdom, when you were born, where did it go? And people kind of get stumped because they were never asked that question. And then they finally realize on their own that it's still with them. So you mean to tell me that the exact creator, the exact wisdom that made every single part of your body, that's still working in you. That's still, that's still in you. When you cut your finger, you don't make that happen. When you're pregnant, you don't make that happen. So what is then the ultimate thing you need to rely on for healing then? Where do you need to look? Outside to a medical doctor or to me or to someone who read a book for 10 years? Or do you want to trust the wisdom that created everything from scratch? And everybody's like, yeah, created it. And is it still in you? Yes. Where does it reside? They're like, your brain. So that's the major shift that a lot of people, what I'm trying to say, a lot of people forget the power that they're carrying in them their entire lives. And they're so almost, I feel like a, a purpose to reconnect people with their creator. Mm. To be like, listen, it's there. It's, it's, there. It's, it's, it's so close to you right now. The answer's right there, but there's too many blind spots. There's errors in philosophy. So errors in your philosophy, you start making errors in your habits. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's then that creates disaster. So a disaster is, is not a one-time thing. It's a result of daily errors, daily habit errors on a daily basis. So when we could find the blind spots, switch the errors of philosophy for positive disciplines or habits, the equation changes, you change your entire mm -hmm. life. And that, and that could work physically, mentally, and spiritually. Uh, you, you said something so powerful, though, because you said that our beliefs, someone watching this right now, it could be, your belief, your premise about something in health that's keeping you from getting well, right? You know, I mean, I had those blockages. I mean, I had them. Yours was, what's a chiropractor going to do for me? You didn't understand. That was a belief. You gained from your father, mother, sister, brother, teacher, who knows, right? But we have certain beliefs that keep us from where God wants to take us. So those watching, I mean, look at your beliefs. Look at your premises because ultimately it guides your values. It guides where you'll go next. But look, I, I think you brought up something so powerful. Again, we both sit here. I think about this. Three things. The brain is what runs the body day in, day out. I had mercury in my brain. I got rid of it. And that's what we call our brain phase. And ultimately, through cell detox, we are getting to here. We do a prep phase. We do a body phase. And then this is, I, what do I always say, Meredith? This is where the magic happens, right? Mm -hmm. Brain phase. I did it for four years. I got stuff out of my brain that accumulated from the time I was in my mother's womb. And that's what we teach people. That's what our doctors do, right? It's like you opened up nerve channels and opened up this to this. Mm -hmm. I did it chemically. You did it physically. We had Bruce Lipton on the show uh, not that long ago, and he talked about our thoughts and how our thoughts can drive cellular dysfunction. So we have our thoughts. We have physical interference, and we have chemical interference, all with the very system where you said that something that created us has the power to heal us. No doubt about it. It's like when I got rid of the interference, my body just healed. It did. And that's what happened to you. And, and, and just the, the, if you understand that, just why wouldn't you do something on a daily basis to ensure that? Like, so it's not something you react to. Like, Ann and I, you know, I was vaccinated, you know, all the, my mom fed me soy formula for, Belief. Six years. Belief I mean, system. The whole thing. Belief. That was it. a belief, right? You name it. And you know, but it's like when you know that, wow, okay, this nervous system is the most important system in my body. I need to keep it interference-free. Then if you now know that, 
then you can't say I should, I, I could, I, I don't, or I won't, you know, because nothing's going to change. But then you say, okay, now I know something. I have a new awareness that changes the philosophy of, of what you believe, what health is. Then, okay, so what are these action steps I need to do? Because it's not something that you do, okay, I'm going to get adjusted once. I'm going to detox once. It's just right. like it, ha it becomes an everyday, you know, for instance, so exactly if, some right. if something's very important in my life, such as your health, is it something you react to or are you going to be proactive? It's something that you don't do once a week. It's done daily. So I know I could tell you Dr. Dan or even we have friends, Dr. Charlie Majors and stuff. You know, we beat cancer and stuff like that by doing the same things mm -hmm. we're we talking teach. about. Right? When I ask him what do you do, he is doing the same exact protocols. Yes, the cancer is right. It doesn't matter what the report said. Different habits made that change and that shift, and he's never going back. That's right. So when you understand that, you change. I'm not going to ever – start vaccinating my kids. I'm not going to start not getting adjusted. I'm, I'm not going to start. I was going to ask you, so when, yeah. when are you going to stop getting adjusted? Never. No. It's to free up your nerves. It's, all about, it's all about this nervous system is what God gave us for literally to connect man to physical and man, and man to spiritual. And I'll do whatever it takes. And I'm learning, so I'm learning from Dr. Dan. What are the other areas that I don't know about that I can now apply? Why? Because, like you said, the main goal, whether it be an adjustment, whether it be cellular detox, the main goal is how do we free as much interference from this nervous system from the damage that's already been in our bodies for 30, 40 years, or all the stuff that we can't control. I can't, I mean, there's stuff, environmental stuff now, and, you know, it just, we, it has to be, a, it's got to be an everyday thing in some way. So whether you're getting adjusted, whether you're cellular detoxing, whatever that is, it's, it's a daily, it's a daily ritual. You know, I just uh, had a client um, this morning that has a neurodegenerative condition. How long would you say that takes for years. someone to develop that? Years. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when we went back yeah. in our history, it was the accumulation of physical stressors, right? No doubt about it. And chemical stressors, you know, in her brain. And I saw the history. I saw what happened. It's her yeah, it's subtle. And to think that it's going to go away in a month, right, is absurd, yeah. right? But, you know, she had been. To so many practitioners, they put her on this vitamin, that homeopathic, this, that, and this, that. And, you know, I remember when I took her on because she almost was asking me the question, what are you going to do different? You know, and I said, first off, why? And everything you've told me you've done and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on, none of them got to the reason why. So she had, and Meredith, this is, you know, some of our conversation of lately, she had teeth pulled cavitations that form, infection, root canals, amalgams, not one doctor ever addressed where at least 70% of the disease starts. She went to a biological dentist, started looking in these areas, massive amounts of infection going right into her brain, lowered her immune system, virus, you name it. And I mean, remarkable how many times I hear these stories and how many times I hear the stories once they get the cause removed, as you did, as I did, and as she did. All of a sudden, now the body starts r rapidly healing. You know, I criticize alternative medicine, if we're going to call it that for the show, because they too are getting sucked in to a premise, a belief, a philosophy of giving something instead of getting upstream to the cause. I call it natural allopathy. Absolutely. I mean, it's just, Absolutely. It's a, so instead, they're still treating the symptom. And you know, that was a great point about the, the dentist, you know, when you told me and you had told me, and about, well, first I heard about the silver fillings from you, and I was like, you know what? I had to check this out. So I went to Dr. Glaros and he took them all out. And then I didn't get the root canals. I had heard about the root canals. And I got all my four, just last year, mm -hmm. the other four, all four root canals taken out. And then I had a bridge, a metal bridge that was connecting, mm -hmm. you know, across. And I made them, I mean, like, so it's like, you know, I, I, like, what can I do? What, what, I, I want to make sure I, in every way, shape, or form, that I'm removing as much interference. And, you know, I always remember the bucket, you know, your bucket analogy. Yeah, that was years ago. It is, it is a perfect analogy because it's like, crap and the toxins and the chemical interference i want to do i want to do my part to do the things that i can remove absolutely. and then you know i know you'll always have some in the bucket but you just don't want it to overflow absolutely you know, you know and, and when you look at so. accumulated stressors physical chemical yeah. emotional thoughts that bucket fills yeah. one day it's going over and believe me when the symptoms start it's already yeah. feel it's like that glass you shake it a little bit those stressors but one day it's gone yeah. you know and uh, people are just unwilling to do what it takes on a daily basis forever that glass empty you know people say to me 
And I ask you the question, when are you going to stop getting adjusted? Never. When am I going to stop getting adjusted? Never. When am I going to stop getting my kids adjusted? Never. When am I going to stop detox? People always say, do you still detox? I say, wait a minute. I live in the same toxic planet you do. You know, it's like, my body has an ability to get rid of toxins, but we are challenged today. I will never stop detoxing. Now, I don't do it to the frequency I did when I was getting my life back. However, you know, detoxing so at the cellular level, getting my spine checked for subluxation, eating well, not putting toxins in. This is what we do. This is what we do. And we've earned health at this point. And, and the greatest is, so you say, well, why don't everybody do this? Well, you know, once they understand it, you know, the reason why people don't do it because number one, it's first of all, it's easy to do. There's nothing that any protocol, or anything that's it's easy to do. But the the reason why people don't do it because it's easy not to do, especially when they have money people. and then time, belief. Yeah, and then you know, <laughs> but when it comes to money, the thing is like in every in every decision we make, uh, we're paying a price. So we're going to pay a price for whether it be your health or we pay the price for not pay paying now, health. So pay later. There's always a price to pay. But when you have a clear clear cut vision, what is my clear vision? I want to have is a little, uh, the least amount of interference in my body doing its job. If that's my clear-cut vision, then it makes the price a lot easier to pay. Because then I know, like, the price to pay is nothing. Like, I love the, the, the quote, you know, you know, a little bit of discipline today weighs, weighs and may cost ounces, but regret weighs and costs tons. Mm -hmm. And, and would someone, what I want so many people to realize is that disease is subtle. It's, for an example, all of us online, if we smoked a cigarette right now, We'll wake up tomorrow. You know, we're going to be alive. And then you say, hey, I got I'm away alive. with it. Yeah, I'll do it again. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, the di no, you didn't. You're, you're, you're causing disease. You're causing disease. And so, but imagine if we smoked a cigarette immediately, we coughed up lead. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, I go eat a McDonald's, you know, a Big Mac right now. Heck, I'm alive. So that's what happens. It's so subtle. But the disease is setting in, you know, underneath the water. It's building, building, building to the tip of the iceberg. And then someone's like, and then all of a sudden, boom, when the crisis and catastrophe hits, they all of a sudden think, what happened now? Nothing happened now. It, w it was really like you, you're having a disease from your entire life for the last 10, 20, 30 years of, of errors in thinking. Yeah, know? but but see, the philosophy out there is yeah. it just you're unlucky. It just happened. Yeah. The doctors make, it, make you think that. The media makes you think that. Everything we're, you know, makes us think that it's just unlucky happened or it was your genetics. No, it happened because there was causes from the time that we were in utero all the way through, uh, maybe even the generation before. You know, but the point is, is we live our life with that thing of there's a cause, there's a reason. You know, in everything we do, that's our philosophy that drives our purpose, that drives how we live our life. You know, but most of the world says, oops, it just happened. Oh, so let me just take that drug and immense, immediately get rid of it. Not understanding that that belief system is causing to be the sickest country in the world. That belief system that you just randomly get sick and you can randomly and take the symptom away and go about your business and like it didn't matter. That That's crap. And it's because they don't, like I said a couple of minutes ago, because they forgot that the actual most powerful source and answer to everything they want in their life in here. was inside them the whole time. whole time. But they were taught as soon as they're out of the womb, the kid needs, a, they need help. You need help. Like the, the human body, you know, pregnancy today is now a medical procedure. It's, uh, we got to monitor it. But I, I, and I tell people, I'm like, if pregnancy was that dangerous, we wouldn't be around as a race anymore. It's the, it's the most primitive form of reproduction to keep a race. So it's like, did you but, have your kids at home? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I, we had three, I delivered all, Titus. Our three of our yeah. uh, biological children delivered at home. Yeah. My wife was outside an hour afterwards, yeah. and my neighbor was like, when did you have yeah. the baby? I thought she just had an hour ago. It's like, yeah, natural, normal. And I know, like, this conversation, <laughs> I, if you're watching this the first time, well, you're probably boy. thinking, these guys are nuts. <laughs> but really, when you think about it, it's like, you know, we wouldn't – we. Our, our population increased because pregnancy and having babies is probably the, the easiest thing the body could do. Absolutely. Yeah. But when you're taught, it's a medical procedure. When you do sonograms, ultrasounds, all these things, uh, we need to vaccinate the mom. As soon as the baby's out, we got to put silver in the eyes, give them a vitamin K shot, give them vaccination. So you're, you're setting up from pregnancy you know, a very dangerous thing right now. And then this baby's going to come out weak. 
and it's up to us, man, or the medical system, see that we're gonna we're, we're make the it stronger. Why, we're the right. reason we're the reason to survive. I call that a major premise. Yeah. A, a premise is a belief, right? So we'll call it a major a belief. A ma yeah. major premise. See, we live our life from our major premise is saying he's got it. Yep. He, we can't better upon what he has done. So our major premise dictates everything that we do, right? So our thing is, wait a minute, vaccination make my baby stronger. You know, it's like that doesn't make sense with my major belief, my major premise, right? But everyone else's major premise is what you said, is that man really has it. And it gets and, scary, you know? and a lot of people get scared. But where's that parents. getting us? It's getting yeah. us to the sickest, you know, country in the Worse world, ever. planet, the universe, whatever it is. But, you know, it, it really is. I, I believe we talked about belief and premise. And I think that when you evaluate your major premise of where life comes from, your major premise, what really does the healing, your major premise, what is man's goal in healthcare? Remove interference. You know, we can't do better than that intelligence that's yeah. in you, man. We can't do better than that. Yeah, we is because you're relying on the intelligence. We just want to, it's just like, a race car down going down the track we just want to clear the clear the road you know and then because i'm not i'm i can't run my body i know what's running it and let let the power that made the body heal it no, and, and you know it's no. it's much more it's it's a physical level it's an emotional level. like you could take this principle and it applies to everything every you know emotionally physically spiritually we live our life from that premise. It, it's, it's it's a premise that actually fits it's promoting good and it's not doing something against the natural right. design. Yeah. You know, like you look at today, let, let's even look at a business, like when you look at oil and stuff like that, it's like, you know, imagine if, if someone like Nikola Tesla, you know, developed a, uh, an energy source that you didn't, that, that worked with the, with the world. It, it didn't drain it from its resources. You know, that's like the chiropractor. It's like, it's working with, yeah. with the design, but then someone comes around, but and then oil caused wars, it caused all this other stuff. So I understand that, you know, if we actually had that premise on all areas natural resources <laughs> oh my gosh working with the land if you look like i'm looking at these trees like no one told that tree uh, to its maximum potential right. i mean you know a tree does its maximum potential as human beings are the only people that we're the only part of this world that don't reach the potential because we have free will that's right and we have a, a ability to think but that's not all bad because our ability to think is the reason sure. why yeah good our point. ability to think is the reason why you know a bird has to fly south for the winter but the thing is you know if there's bad conditions they're still going south but we know how to think we could we could make maybe take a detour do this stuff like that so we have the ability to think which is very positive but that ability to think is also um you know i think meaning that the wrong premises and belief systems and we think in that way that's actually total an interference yeah. of us just like all those trees out there Absolutely. reaching, you know, the maximum potential. Yeah. yeah There's not that's, one that's thing in life great... that doesn't do its work. They, it all, everything, every, I'm looking at plants, mm -hmm. they all strive for their optimal potential. Right. Yeah. And human beings are the ones that do That's why our belief systems yeah. interfere, right? I mean, that's where, if you're not where you want to be in life, evaluate your beliefs is the first place you go. That's what I do. Even now, I want to evaluate my beliefs if I'm, I feel like I'm not maxing my, yeah. my potential. I mean, I think it's best that you be your own worst and best critic. Mm -hmm. Like really look, like if there's, a, some, if there's a situation that you don't like in your life, ask yourself, don't blame the circumstances. And I'll tell you why you don't, because we live in the same circumstances as sick and diseased people live, but we're not sick and diseased. Why? Because it's the same circumstances. The government's going to be the same. The economy's going to be the same. You know, the weather's going to be the same. So don't blame the circumstances. Because if you blame the circumstances, like I, I call it seed, soil, sun, all your surroundings, that's all you have. All I have is my surroundings. So the thing is, if I blame that, what am I left with? Nothing. <laughs> so the thing is, you have to change yourself. So, it's easier to yeah. do, it's easier to blame your circumstance yeah. than change yeah. yourself, though. I so mean, that's the key. That's why you, you know. really criticize yourself and ask the question, well, why am I in this situation? Or if someone yelled at me, I'm like, why did that person yell at me? Did I do something? And then really analyze yourself, find the error. You know, John Rockefeller is reading that every night he would sit down with a journal for 20 minutes and go through his entire day. And if there's anything that didn't go too right, I'm going to move yeah. this closer. Is there background noise? Do you hear that? Hmm. It's okay. No, okay, good. Yeah. You know, if, okay. Anything, if, if anything didn't go right, he would self criticize himself. So, like, you know what? I did a. a I met with someone today. It wasn't a good conversation. And he would say, did I do anything wrong? And then he would, if he, if he felt that, man, it was my fault or an error in my judgment, he would write down the, in the journal, I need to work on being more compassionate. And, it, and so every, he did that every single night. 
Wow, I, I, he examined his day to see and criticized himself in a good way why to find errors that he wasn't aware of to switch them and to work on the areas. That he was I, imagine if we all did that. I mean, I'm telling you, that's yeah. a that's a great thing. Yeah, man. Stop. Oh, They just lost you. You are not filming anymore. We're oh, back. Okay. All right. It cut out. Yeah. And we have a little noise going back here. So hopefully you get it, still hear us. Are you good? We can hear us? Okay. Good. Um, you know, but, but the thing is, you, 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 but you're not down. You still have self esteem and self confidence. Like you do it as an ag, you self criticize, criticize yourself as a tool to become better. Mm -hmm. You don't do it to, because someone could do that and they're just always down on themselves. Right, right, no, you no, do it's like to become better. I'm right. a confident person and I have high self-esteem. Right. And I'm doing this because I want to be even better than I am now right. as a human being. So, but, and at the same time, I could put my ego aside and say, you know what? I was wrong in that conversation. I was hasty. I, I, I wanted to have the last word. I'm just saying that uh, just a conversation. And it's like, so I'm going to work on that. Or, or I didn't do my exercise today. I didn't do this today. So, you know, I, I, I wasn't doing things that allowed me to become my best. I was doing things that actually sabotage that mm -hmm. goal. So it's not, I, I'm not down on myself or depressed, but it's, you, know, you do it with, do it with self-esteem and confidence that I'm using this as a tool, not to show how weak and sinful and, mm -hmm. you know, down I am. It'd be better. Did. It's how can I be better? You need to coach yourself. Yeah. Coaching well, you know, it almost seems trite now yeah. to talk about exercise, but mm -hmm. I promised our viewers a little bit because that was a, that was an amazing conversation. Well, and I, I hope I know the doctors watching and you know the the people watching, uh, you know, all got something out of that. I know that. You for know, sure. when Dr. Dan and I get together, I mean, I'll tell you that our conversations are always mindset. I mean, oh, mindset always. and philosophy yep. all the time. Absolutely. And because because everything we're going to talk about, whether it be exercise or nutrition, that's the easy part. The premise and the philosophy there, all that stuff is. Well, of course I, I would do that. Of course I would get adjusted. Of course I would eat right. Of course I got to detox on a daily basis. It's like it's like brushing your teeth or drinking water. It's like well, of course, yeah. you know, because it, it and because you shift. You, there's no going back. There's no I'm doing this for a week or two or twelve weeks. It's like oh, my life has changed. This is what I do now. Yeah, no, no doubt. We could. Is it too much noise in the background? Because we could just walk down with the. the um, it's. I mean, I can hear you. It's not too bad, but it, it's a little bit muffled in the background. Yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll walk down a little ways. Come on, we'll just pick up the thing. I have enough battery to keep us. Uh, we're going to go for a little walk. All right. Always going to leave that other. Healing TV. Uh, I like this. I'm going to show you the background, too, while we walk down here a ways. Um, watch. Can you see that? Beautiful. See that? Yep. Gorgeous. Yeah, so, anyways, that, that's where we are. So, um, but we'll just do it right here. It's a little more quiet. So you can hear us all right, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. There you go. Anyways, yeah, so I mean, um, it is. My mindset mindset is is everything, you know. And but uh, you know, on the on the thing of exercise, you know, we, we were out uh, we were out to dinner and we had a conversation about I was talking to you about diet variation, uh, something that I've talked about on the show about. And we started talking about exercise variation. You know, your routine, you know, it's all about adaptation, forcing the body to adapt and become stronger. You know, if it doesn't adapt, you become weaker. But one of the ways we do it through diet is varying the diet. But exercise, no doubt, is the same thing. So you never do the same routines. As a matter of fact, kind of explain to our viewers just how in ways that you vary your diet. And even for basic people, just some things how they can vary their diet. I keep saying diet, exercise. I mean, exercise-wise, what you could do, I like to change it up because you have different muscle fibers in the body. So, you know, I'm at the age now where I can't just get under 500 pounds and, and you, know, put 40, you know, for 46 reps. So I had to adapt to that say, well, how can I maximize hormone response? So the whole reason with exercise, I'm not, I'm not building muscle when I'm exercise. You know, my goal is to go in there and stimulate a hormonal response. I'm, I'm causing the body to adapt, to change, and then I'm out. And then let the, let the body do the rest. So... You know, one week I'll do heavier, you know, maybe six to ten reps. And the next week I'll do maybe 14 to 18. And the, the, then the third week I always make that my 40 to 80. 
you know, and it just it's always changing the body. You know, you're always keeping good form. You get in there in 40 minutes to an hour and then get out. Mm -hmm. I'm big on intro workout nutrition. I really think that's that's really helped me. Where you know, there's you could actually you know have a drink with you with maybe some fast absorbing carbohydrates or, or proteins in there and, and maybe some branch chains. It all depends what you're doing. So even during the workout, I'm constantly giving you know I'm priming I'm priming the uh, nutrients immediately, not uh, not going through that uh, right you know catabolic state. So you know I mean um, just someone beginning or you know not as advanced right because you just gave some really advanced yeah. stuff there which i think is, is powerful and, and i do the i do the exact same thing i never go in the gym and do the same amount of reps i'm always varying it and like light days heavy days i mean the more variation the more it forces the body to adapt and therefore get stronger especially if you're having good nutrition right um so what about the person just beginning that just says I just want to. I just want to exercise for the health, lose some weight. I mean, how would they vary their workouts? Well, I would. I would definitely pick two to three days a week to start there. Mm -hmm. You know, I would maybe do the whole body circuit, or maybe do an upper body day and then a lower body day, and just alternate back and forth. And and if you really start catching the bug and you really enjoy it, and you you go to four days, and maybe you split. You have two leg days, two upper body days. But really pay attention to your recuperation. If you're sore, if you feel your central mm -hmm. nervous system is fatigued, then we know that. We have an issue with nutrition and sleep. You know, like overtraining. Yeah, sure. Overtraining. There's for me. Overtraining is really. Uh, I'm, I'm more. I think you're more. You're under eating than under sleeping. Mm -hmm. Or there is a toxic interference. And there's, there's there's your body's not able to recuperate. So you, you could adapt to that. Like come, when I do my shows, I get up to training seven days a week. I'm doing cardio in the morning two days, seven days a week because I slowly progress up to that. So if I could do that, with, with, with recuperating. You know, then anybody could do that. But so that's why the recuperation is a huge key, and it's what you do outside. And on my kit, did I stimulate? And then all the results happen after. Absolutely. Outside. Yeah, you don't get stronger in the gym. You get stronger when you're recovering, yeah. right? You know, but we always have to force our body that adaptation. And, you know, I mean, someone just beginning can still vary their reps, right? Like next time uh, you do that exercise next week, do higher reps, you know, do 30, do 40, even 50, even yeah, 80. Works, yeah. yeah, I mean, all the way up to 80 reps. And then next time do maybe 8 or 10, I mean, the next week. So the point is, is vary your weights, vary your repetitions, uh, vary um, how, the, even exercises, right? I mean, very, don't do the same exercises is another good thing. So um, there's multiple exercises you can do for your legs. Change yeah. it up. Multiple exercises you can do for your chest and shoulders. Mix it up, right? So. Absolutely. You know, always keep the body guessing. Yep, always keep the body guessing. Well, just for the sake of time, um, that was a great show. I uh, thank you. I mean, honestly, that we gave a lot of yeah, great stuff there. So, um, you know, Meredith, I'm going to send it back to you. But that was a great show. I don't even know what we titled this show because there were so many gems in there. I know there were a lot of gems, a lot of great information. I know I'm inspired, Dr. Chris, as well. So, where can people find out more about you? Well, um, you know, if you're a chiropractor out there, we have something called chirothoughtleaders.com. So you go to chirothoughtleaders.com. And, you know, if you just uh, you look at me on Facebook, I'm Dr. Zeno. I'm mm -hmm. Dr. Chris Zeno or Chris Zeno. And uh, or my uh, office is abundantlifechiro.com. And you can just see about my clinic. Yeah, know, absolutely. So, no, no, no doubt know, about it. All, all of those are my emails, so you can contact me there. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and for the, the docs watching, uh, you have, you have some practice building oh, yeah. things that you do. I mean, how would they get yeah. that? Because uh, we do have a lot of docs that watch this, and I, I couldn't recommend any of it more because they're going, man, I, I want to do that. I want to function from that purpose. And, you know, what, what is that called? Well, well, if you go to the chirothoughtleaders.com, you know, there's a little uh, test you could take. to we, we focus on the four main pillars that I believe practice, and we find the area that the doctor's weak in, and, and automatically we have tra free trainings for that doctor. So, I mean – to be a member is free. You know, you, you have all these videos, you have access to everything. And then along the way, along that journey of the trainings, you'll have access if you want to take it deeper, too. If you want to start doing the dinner talks, your mindset stuff, with it. you know, all the, all the other products that we have, speaking better, the communication with Roberto Monaco. So, mm -hmm. you know, I brought thought leaders in from all outside, mm -hmm. not just in chiropractic, but outside of chiropractic, just so your whole, all the areas, whether it be speaking, communicating, business, wealth creation, you know, commun you know like I said, communicating better, doing Whatever it is to bring your practice to a new level, you have access to that. So. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that, great. That's yeah, a great it's, gift. it's a huge platform. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're at the part in your life, so am I, is that we want to train and equip doctors. I mean, there's so many 
doctors out there, but they're not coming from the same place we are. And our goal is we know if we empower them, we're going to affect thousands, millions upon millions, you know, instead of just one on one. So thank you for doing that because so many docs watch this show and, and they need that stuff, you know. Yeah, so. and that's part of my purpose. Like I added to my, my purpose was always, my, my sole purpose was, yeah. and you know, do you, well, there's a the thing, like you need to have your sole purpose written out. So my sole purpose was to lead people towards fill lives with the guy given principles and laws of chiropractic care to the art of the adjustment and then to equip my patients with the wisdom and knowledge that can go out and help others. So I added that last line because I was like, you know, if I could equip my patients with the wisdom and the knowledge of health to then be able to go out there with confidence and help others, then we're creating a massive My you know, goal culture. is always to teach, whether it's yeah. a doctor, a client, you know, it's just always to teach them the process because that's ultimately what yeah. changes lives. That's so. leadership, yeah, because I'm it's not leadership. forcing yeah. someone. It's like they mm -hmm. have to make that decision on their own. Like yeah. everything you do has to be at your own accord. Yes. So when you do it, there's no regrets. There's no apologies. Uh, it just, and there's no complaining, you know. So it's something that if it, it, I can't put that thought in their mind. They have to come, you know, to the conclusion that this is right for me and they make that decision. So I'm just, I'm leading yeah. them. You know, yeah. so with thought leader, that's where we get thought leadership. Absolutely, just, yeah. we're lead, we're showing them. Well, you believe this for forty years or fifty years, I get it. But what if I told you it was really like this? Now, what if I told you that that wasn't blue, that was red? It'll blow someone's I, mind. I'm colorblind. You, know? you yeah. can convince me of this, actually. So, <laughs> so that's what happens. So we're just trying to shift people's yeah. awareness, and then when they do get it and they start to believe, it's like their whole life has changed yeah. Just yeah. within a second. So, beliefs. It all starts yeah. with beliefs. You could have bad ones. You could have false ones. That's why you're not where you want to be, even with your health. So Meredith, turn it back over to you. Amen. Well, well said, guys. It was an awesome show. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, tune in next week, and have a great weekend.